As the love of Beethoven's music and fascination with his life is such an integral part of my own musical experience, it would be hard to say exactly when the idea first came to me to transcribe the nine. Beethoven's nine symphonies, the cornerstones of Western civilization for concert organ solo. As the idea crystallized in my mind back in the year 2000, there were coincidentally nine main factors. Given the vast scale of this project, we only have time now to expand very briefly on these nine areas of discussion. Beethoven's music has an extraordinary capacity to speak to people in instantly understandable terms. There are several reasons for this, of course, but one of my personal favourites is a quote from the New Grove entry on Beethoven in 1980. For the respect his works have commanded of musicians and the popularity they have enjoyed among wider audiences, Beethoven is probably the most admired composer in the history of Western music. Beethoven's genius and his monumental artistic legacy to humanity in the face of such traumatic personal circumstances have inspired and continue to inspire millions of people. And as the COVID-19 pandemic has ravaged the globe in this Beethoven's 250th anniversary year, we can at least look forward to 2027, the bicentenary of his death and the joy that will bring so many. Beethoven's interest in and attraction to the pipe organ deserves to be more widely known, as does the influence the pipe organ had on his life as a performer and composer. We know Beethoven had always been attracted by the organ, and we can thank the young Salesian organist Karl Gottlieb Freudenberg for having a written conversation with the profoundly deaf Beethoven in the summer of 1825. After discussing several composers together, the 54-year-old Beethoven famously stated, I too played the organ a great deal in my youth, but my nerves could not withstand the power of the gigantic instrument. I place an organist who is master of his instrument first among virtuosi. The lasting impact the pipe organ, organ technique, and organists themselves had on both Beethoven's developmental years and subsequent achievements is clear and deserves to be more widely appreciated. The concert organ tradition, as it has grown from the Industrial Revolution England of the 1830s, is the means by which the largest audiences in history have been brought to the pipe organ as an instrument in a concert setting, not a religious one. The concert organ tradition is a unique tradition in which large pipe organs, usually given the epithet grand due to their physical size and musical stature, are especially designed and artistically installed for permanent use as concert instruments in secular public buildings. To entertain and educate are the watchwords of the concert organ repertoire. Any study of concert organ programs in any secular hall around the world from the mid-19th century to the Second World War will show that there was a balance of repertoire, a balance that is absolutely crucial. That balanced repertoire included appropriate original organ works together with transcriptions of music originally composed for other instruments. All of this blended together to make an entertaining and educative concert program for a concert audience. From an historical perspective, it is the mighty W.T. Best 
the finest and most famous 19th century concert organist who gave us the largest number of individual movements, mainly the slow movements, from the Beethoven symphonies. Before my transcriptions for concert organ solo, the solo performance of the complete Beethoven symphonies had only been possible on the piano. A handful of artists had transcribed the nine for solo piano, including, most famously, Franz Liszt. My introduction to performing Beethoven on the organ was as a teenager, with the second movement of Symphony No. 5, in the transcription by W.T. Best. That movement is in fact the earliest Beethoven transcription in Best's arrangements from the scores of the great masters. I saw how audiences responded to hearing such glorious music interpreted on the King of Instruments. Audiences are drawn to the music of composers they know, to music that is familiar. Everyone knows Beethoven. The time is right for organists to show the musical world just what our instrument can do performing Beethoven's immortal music. The major consideration I have always had is that I want my transcriptions to sound as though they had been conceived by the composer for the organ, that Beethoven had written nine organ symphonies, as it were. To achieve this, the technical demands, whilst necessarily complex, should never be humanly impossible or unplayable. One can push boundaries without becoming ridiculous. And what every generation considers possible is greater than the generation before, as Charles-Marie Vidor found out after pronouncing Marcel Dupré's Prelude in G minor unplayable. I have found the key, pardon the pun, to turning orchestral symphonies into organ symphonies to be the consideration, first and foremost, of the character and content of the oral texture within the original score and the likely success of its transfer, or translation, to the transcribed score. So the art of transcribing the symphonies formed one of the two main parts in making this possible. There are also the actual what and how issues of performing a Beethoven symphony on the organ. The what and how of performing are themselves greatly affected by two what's and two how's. What instrument are you performing on and what transcription are you performing from? Is it a quality transcription in the first place? Then there are the two how's. How was the instrument designed and how would you use it? Many of us who have discovered the pipe organ during our lives have found one instrument particularly inspirational, one special instrument that we could each call our own personal temple of tone, to quote George Ashdown Audsley. For me, it was and is the Melbourne Town Hall Grand Organ. There are very few single concert venues in the world in which we can trace the development of the concert organ tradition as clearly and comprehensively as at the Melbourne Town Hall. As the Melbourne Town Hall Grand Organ developed through concert organ history, from the classically inspired Hill specification of 1872, to the ultra-symphonic Edwin H. Lemaire specification of 1906, to the ultra-romantic specification of 1929, to the romantic, symphonic, eclectic specification of 2001. These four instruments, all in the one location, if not the same building, illustrate how complex an issue the art of concert organ design is. I was very aware of this when transcribing the nine and made sure these transcriptions would be effective on instruments of many shapes and sizes with certain tonal and technical requirements. 
As Beethoven's symphonies, performed by an orchestra, take the audience through a voyage of tonal and musical discovery using the various orchestral instruments, so the solo performance of the symphonies on the pipe organ takes the audience and soloist through a tour de force of the pipe organ's tonal palette and musical potential. This is an opportunity unrivaled by any other solo instrument. And that is where, as concert organists, we have such an incredibly distinct advantage over any other musicians. And now, in the 21st century, thanks to the advances in console management systems since the 1980s and these transcriptions of the nine, organists have all the tools they need to perform these masterworks for the widest possible audience. For organists performing these transcriptions, if Beethoven heard the solo performance of one of his symphonies on a modern concert organ, I am convinced he would reaffirm his immortal words that accomplished organists are the greatest of all virtuosos. For the music, video and music scores, visit ConcertOrgan.com.